Okay, we're now going to discuss the social impacts of uh, the credit crunch and how, as we venture into the recession, the social impacts it's going to have within our community. So I'd like to draw your attention to the front page of The Independent this morning. The headline reads, The Domino Effect. This is Richard Green, 40, a news agent in Solihull. Uh, hit by falling sales, he decided to repair his... Not to repair his windows, sorry. Thousands of other people did likewise. So Chemex, the company uh, in Stockport that supplies building, supplies building trade, went out of business with 60 people losing their jobs these are sort of the tiny decisions that lay behind uh, the loss of 5,000 jobs yesterday and experts predict that 2 million people may become unemployed by Christmas uh, we're joined by our debt busting expert mr. Richard Fenton so that's a worrying um, headline it is um, this is now really the time that we're going to start to actually feel the impact of the credit crunch on the street we've had a lot of rhetoric about the the credit crunch itself how it's affected the banking and finance sector which is the fairly obvious effects of a credit crunch now we've had a couple of months of the credit squeeze we're now beginning to actually see how that impacts people on the high street how consumer spending is being restricted and of course that story there is is, is very important to the, to the early signs that, that we're now experiencing i mean behind that 5000 we're seeing companies such as virgin media losing 2200 jobs uh, Glaxo Smith Klein, I think, have lost 620 jobs. Two huge organisations which are making cutbacks. And of course, these people that are losing their jobs are obviously losing their salaries. That's 5,000 mortgage payments that are going to be struggling to be met over the coming months. Um, and it couldn't be a worse time. There's no good time to lose your job. But of course, we're coming into Christmas um, and people really want to have cash in the pocket so they can go out and, and make good for the, the, the Christmas uh, season. Indeed. I, I mean, uh Look at this, the, the domino effect. This is, this is where this, this trickle down um, we we're talking about, what happens you know, from Wall Street to High Street kind of thing, in there, and everybody's in, in between. So we're now starting to see it at the grassroots. This is where it starts to get more up close and personal. Absolutely, and we're going to see other things start to impact us on a social level. Um, less obvious things. I mean, obviously, we can think about the financial impact. But, of course, if people have less to spend, they're going to look at other ways to make ends meet. And, of course... Crime rates are set to rise, and rather interestingly, Tesco's yesterday announced they'd seen a 30% increase on shoplifting in their stores, and they've attributed that directly to the credit crunch. Uh, rather interestingly, Iceland have seen a dramatic increase in the theft of frozen legs of lamb. Um, right. So it's amazing the lengths that people will go. Yeah. So if you see anybody walking rather awkwardly out of uh, your favourite uh, frozen food store, uh, perhaps it might be time to go around to their house for Sunday lunch. Is that a leg, yeah. of, a leg of lamb in your trolleys, or are you just, just pleased to see, see me? me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, that is a, it, it's bro broken down. I've got some statistics of, of areas within the communities and, and society which are going to start feeling uh, this. And uh, the increase in substance abuse as well, which is not necessarily just drugs, but um, um, alcohol as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's always the less obvious things that catch you unaware. Drugs are the most obvious place to look with the, the increasing use of uh, hard narcotics such as cocaine and heroin, etc. But it's more likely to come through alcohol abuse. Uh, interestingly, alcohol sales and tobacco sales do not see a fall in times of recession. And rather interestingly, alcohol in particular can see a dramatic increase in sales, particularly in hard-hit areas uh, where people are looking for ways to escape the, the dreariness of, of the recession. It can be quite a depressing, hard time for people. So they're looking for other ways to alleviate that, that stress. And of course, it's very dangerous to get into that trap because of course, if you become dependent on anything uh, that's costing you cash, it's only gonna aggravate the problem. Um, it's, it's, this is the time when people really start, need to start looking inwards uh, and keeping a close eye on family members and friends and making sure that people are coping well and, and offering their, their, their support. The, the UK is famous for being able to pull together that, uh, that blitz spirit that we saw all the way through the 1940s. That's something that the UK now needs to focus on, helping each other and supporting each other through hard times. And of course, if you have cash to spend, get out and spend it. Get out and spend it because that will stimulate the economy. Um, we've seen lots of suggestions... Sorry, it's interesting you say that. You know, at times when people are feeling the pinch in the pocket, any kind of loose income that, or income that you've got readily available kind of offload it well, not, save it. Not necessarily offload it, but we need to stimulate the economy. That's the key thing. Uh, we talked about the banking and finance sector losing confidence with each other. Well, of course, that's great within the banking and finance sector, but it's the consumers who've now lost confidence. Mm. Um, 
um, Gordon Brown and all of the opposition parties have talked about delivering tax cuts to the consumer. Well, of course, that's great. That's going to put more people um, with cash in their pockets. But they're not going to spend that cash. That's not going to make it to the high street. They're going to save that cash. And, of course, that's going to aggravate the problems. And the only people that are going to feel the benefit are the banks. What the government needs to do is probably cut something like VAT so that consumer goods are cheaper for people to spend. Um, again, we're coming into Christmas, and it's going to be very easy for people to wrap themselves up and insulate themselves and, and kind of protect that overspending, which is good. Uh, people need to be thinking about what people actually want for Christmas, for example, rather than just going out and buying the usual rubbish that we see in, in the streets and actually making the gifts more useful and perhaps being a little bit more creative about how they spend their cash. Richard, do you think we're going to return to the dark days of the early 90s when there was, the, uh, there was a terrible recession where uh, lots of communities were, uh, people within those communities were severely unemployed, uh, members of our society felt excluded from the rest of society. We had um, just really problems with uh, employment in, in general and, pri and, 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 and uh, food prices and heating and all right across the board. Have we learnt our lessons from then uh, and are we going to be able to support ourselves so we don't go back to that or is that inevitable? I, I, I think it's, it's fairly safe to say, although it's, it's very difficult to predict how these things w will end, um, that we have learnt our lessons from the 90s. Uh, we've seen two very severe recessions in the last two decades, mm -hmm. um, the last of which we came out of relatively quickly. It lasted about 12, 18 months and impacted very little on the, the social effects that we're talking about today in terms of unemployment figures. Uh, interest rates, etc. And the government has been very quick to react. And what's unusual about this particular uh, recession that we're, we're going into, we're not alone. This is a worldwide problem. Uh, and consequently, we've had a worldwide response. Uh, and we should see some dramatic uplift in the coming years. Um, in the early days, people were talking about the recession lasting maybe six to 12 months. I think it's fair to say that we're going to get to the back end of uh, 2010 before we see any real uplift within the market. Um, it's getting the confidence back into the economy. The key thing to remember is there's exactly the same amount of cash in the world today as there was three years ago. Yeah. It's just stopped moving. Right. We need to stimulate the economy, get people spending in the high street and get the confidence back into the system. What we're going to see when we come out of the recession is a change of approach from the banking and finance sector. Um, we're not going to see the heady days of, of, of lending that we've previously seen. People are going to be less reluctant to part with their cash uh, to, the, to the consumer. Great. Well, Richard, thank you very much for joining us this morning, uh, giving us, put, putting all these kind of confusing areas of the recession and the credit crunch into perspective and uh, a bit of optimism there as well. Thank yeah. you, sir. Good stuff. Excellent. Thank you very much. Time for a quick break now, after which we'll be finding